What's going on everybody? Uh, episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures and today's episode we're going to be talking to this madman. Hello. Alex from Intense Off Road. That's me. If you don't, uh, I'm sure you know of him or have seen his videos before. And uh, we're going to do a walk around his rig. Yeah. See what's so show cool you, about his patrol. Show you what's up. Yeah, see what yeah. all the hubbub is about. It's not a uh, massive built up thing with all the fruit in the kitchen. Which is what I like about it. Yeah, it's just got some basics. Yeah, simplicity yeah. is the key here, guys. You might pick up a trick or two out of it. You never know. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. All right, so the back of the rig. Tell yep. us about it, mate. What's what's going on here? This is where the camping happens from. Um, set of drawers. This is the first vehicle I've ever had drawers in. The thing I've not generally liked about them is you add 80 kilos of weight just to store things in. Yep. So I've used tubs, but um, yeah, I had to go for drawers on this. I just find myself carrying too much stuff, especially camera gear, so I just needed the a handy storage. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so these are essentially the same as the Titan drawers. Um, from everything I can compare about them, I've got them from Super Cheap Auto years ago. I don't think they do them anymore. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Not in this style. Um, in here, this one here is pretty much all tools and recovery gear. So that says my recovery bag, tent pegs and stuff. I've got tool roll, tool, tool rolls. Spare parts, there's a socket set under there, bottle jack, um, tire repair kit, everything I need for fixing things or recoveries. Yep. Lives in there. Right, big drawer. Yep. So it's pretty tightly packed. Got How long are they? 800? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, probably that's 800 would be about right. Control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, got the side wing kit, it's just got some spares under it. There's yep. a wheel bearing, a bit of oil, belts, hoses under there. Cool, cool. This one here is the kitchen drawer. Got a good mixture of grab me gear and red road stuff here. With the old plug for Jimmy there. Yep, grab me gear. Um, it's good gear. Wash tub, there's a camp oven inside the wash tub. And then we've got a bit of cutlery there, chopping Some board. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool yeah. Stuff. And of course the fridge slide. The 30 year old angle? 30 year old, it's like a mid 80s model angle. Put it in a fancy canvas bag so as it looks a bit nicer. Keeps it uh, keeps it a bit more insulated. <laughs> On a fridge slide, obviously. Yep. In and out. Just do your bits and bobs. Yeah, the uh, cage here, built out of an old screen door. I was just thinking that, it looks like an old screen door. Yep, took it off my, off my house. So just keeps stuff from falling in on the fridge. And I also store my cooker up on the top there. Uh, there's an inverter mounted over the other side. Yep. And then just down here, I keep a uh, 100 watt folding solar blanket, ropes, tie downs, bucket, and then there's two batteries as well. Okay. So there's a 58 amp hour AGM under the side floor kit. Mm -hmm. And then on the top of the side floor kit, behind all this stuff, there's another 58 amp hour. And they're both joined up in parallel, so that makes it uh, 116 amp hours nice. of AGM. And yeah, that, that's about it for down the back here. I don't have any lighting or anything flash set up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you got, what's the um, little Anderson plugged in here? Oh that's yeah. That's, is that for the solar or? Yeah, that's solar input. Solar input. Um, so if you look up the back of the fridge cage there, project uh, 25 amp DC to DC charger. Yeah, nice. So that one takes the charge from the front to charge the two batteries here. And that's the solar input for it. Beautiful. I mean, it's pretty well set up. What's the tub for? What do you... Oh, that's my food box. That's your food box? Yeah, so that's um, that's always got stuff in it. I can pretty much, if I'm going on a, a very quick one-nighter, it's always like got... Today? Yeah. I mean, I actually bought food to come away for today, I mean, but... We've got, we've got the essentials. Most of this stuff lives in there all the time, so I can go on a one-nighter and just have beans for dinner. Beautiful. Canned veggies, two-minute noodles, all my oil, sugar, yep. that sort of stuff just permanently lives in that box. Beautiful. I just grab that out of my shed, chuck it in here, load yeah. it up with any extras that I want to take for this particular trip. Makes it easy, right? Yeah. This is a me compressor. Yep. Nothing X. flash. What's that one? Is that the XTM you're talking about? Nah, this is a. Got it. From, my neighbour gave it to me. Flash one. It's a Repco. It's a Repco cheapy. Yeah, red mate goes faster. Yeah. I've burned <laughs> through like oh, three or four compressors in the last couple of years. 
I've yep. just had heaps of cheap ones lying around, so I just use it, brakes, toss it. I've Go been, to the next one. Yeah, I've been saving for a nice compressor, but uh, then I spent all my nice compressor money on a 270 awning instead. Yeah, we'll get to that, which is a pretty deadly looking awning as well. So. Yeah. Um, and wait, so we just, I might have missed it, but we've got a little toilet, uh, not toilet roll, paper. Oh yeah, my paper, paper towels. Towel. That's just on a bungee cord, yeah? Yeah, it's the best way to store paper towel. Um, yeah, it's, I actually really like that. It's pulled tight enough to the top so that that doesn't spin easily. Yeah. If you let it spin too easily, you end up with it all unraveled everywhere. Perfect. A little bungee cord, keeps that nice and accessible. A little quirky mod you were showing on your video down there, your little 90 degrees. I'll just show it. If you haven't seen this video, I'll link it. but. That allows you to open your back door further? Yeah, so GU doors only open to about here. Yep. And so your drawer will just open up past the door. And if you have your fridge mounted too far that way, it hits that. Ah, uh, yeah, so, I can see that. Yeah, little, <laughs> little <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. 30 buck door extension bracket lets it go past 90 degrees. And then you can have your fridge in there and you're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, as I said, it's, this is simple, honest setup and I suppose the way you've set it up is you can just go for a one-nighter yeah. or even probably a week if you get the right food and that kind of thing sorted yeah. up. You've got everything you need and you know, you've got your burner and that kind of thing which we'll go into a little bit later. Yeah. But it's a very, very honest, simple setup and if you've got a GU Patrol, yeah, yeah, it's it's not hard to get it set up like this, that's for sure. I've got another of these boxes at home, um, just sits there empty. If I'm going for four nights or something or I've done nine days out of this thing just on the water and food I've carried. Yeah, nice. So I just have a second food box that I chuck in and shuffle things around if, I, uh, if I'm going for longer. Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll get to your water and that kind of stuff soon. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's have a talk about this damn cool looking awning of yours, which is probably the newest thing you put on it. Yeah, so this is the, the third use I've had of it. So, easy on? Easy on bat. The bat? Bat 270, that's what they call it. And it's a South African awning. South African company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've um Australians are pretty well known for having made good full wheel drive gear for a while, but I think the um the South Africans have got the overlanding gear down packed and they've been doing it for a lot longer. A long time. A yeah. Long time. And like they have to try and escape rhinos and whatnot, so you know, they build it tough. Yeah, they build it right. I was just looking at a few things, I mean all this all this gear here looks extremely well made and then you've got a little patch up here which doesn't allow any water to get through, yeah, the pinch points that are all been covered. They've thought about it, that's for sure. It's, yeah, um, definitely. So it can freestand in good weather. Um, this bear, I'd probably have it freestanding now, but it was pretty breezy last night. Mm. So um, it'll freestand and then you can just drop the legs down, lock them off. You don't really need to tie it because it can only go so far up. Yeah, okay, yep. Um, I do need to, I do want to make a little bit of a change to the back here. You can see I've got my shovel, which I've strapped to the roof overhanging. Yep. And is just supporting the the back part just because a little it bit bent. tends to want to sag a bit. Mm. So I want to make a bolt-in bracket that just comes off the the back of the roof rack and um, just lets it sit on there. Yeah, sure. A little bit of feedback for the guys that make it. Yeah. Maybe they can knock up some sort of generic bracket. Yeah, a brace or something like that. Or I'll just get a bit of scrap metal at home and yeah, get easy. out the angle grinder. Chuck through in the, on the roller roof rack and you'll be sorted. Yeah. Yeah, no, it looks like good gear, and uh, you took literally oh, 10 seconds to set it up. It was very, yeah. very, quick. very yeah. quick. You just unzip it, unhook all the legs because they sort of sit on this little bracket, just mm. pop them over that, walk it around, and then you've got a, a rope that attaches to the front. Yep. Hold it there, and you're done. Bob's your uncle. It's the quickest awning I've ever set up. Yeah, it was quicker than mine, that's for sure. It's a bit uh, lighter than the others as well, so 21 kilos. Yep. and it's uh, not too not too much bigger than a normal just pull out the side awning that's a problem with a lot of the freestanding 270 awnings it's that huge It'd be like that tall yeah, weigh 30 kilos massive and it's uh it's good canvas as well like the sun's right out behind me and you can't even see the light coming through so you know it's good quality canvas not too thin yeah so this is the second camping trip i've had it unfolded for so far liking it you know it looks like a pretty uh good bit of kit that's for sure so, uh, sleeping quarters, mate. Let's let's have a look at this Darchi swag you've got. Yeah. Which looks very similar to my swag, but just obviously way better quality. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's 420 GSM ripstop canvas. Uh, this is the Darchi Dusk to Dawn 1400 double swag. Um, so if you go to King's and you get the Big Daddy Deluxe, you're getting like, it's about 150, 155. 
Yep. I didn't want that massive length. Um, so this one's just a sort of smaller double at 1400. Um, yeah. Yeah. Easy to roll up though. Yeah, that's right. Easy to roll up. It's got a 50 mil mattress in it. Uh, I've had it for about a year. Thoughts? And love it. Can't fault the thing. Um, it's been pretty good. I think the only thing you might fault if you were uh, in the market to buy one is 50 mil mattress. Yeah. Um, that's okay for me. I find it quite comfy. The foam's not like it's not too thin. High density. Uh, it's quite high density, but not so so high that you don't sink into it. Mm, so yeah. I find it, it's just the perfect level of, of softness for me. Um, but if you if you need to, you can put a 20 mil layer on it. Yeah. If you wanted extra comfort, that's the only thing you might um, you might pick up. But haven't broken any poles yet. I've slept probably about 10 or 15 rainy nights in it. Never had a drop of water in. Stays nice and dark in the morning. Yeah, and three pole design. Like, you get some elaborate swags these days. Oh yeah. I don't, oh, wanna, yeah. I don't wanna mess around with poles too much. Yeah. Simplicity, man. Just keep it simple. It takes two, three minutes to set up and you're done. Yeah, quite like it. Very cool. And do you use your mat, mat a little bit? Or I know you did a video on it when we were here. But is this sort of something you take take with you every, every yeah, trip? Yeah, I've started using it for every trip. Yeah. Um, I don't always have it fully folded out like this. Um, it's a good size for my, I've got a tent as well, and we use a tent on the ground sheet. So fold it out like that, perfect size for the tent. For the swag, I generally just fold it in half. Perfect size for the swag. Perfect. And you've got a video coming out. I'll, well, if that's out before this video, I'll link it. If it's not, I'll link it after. But um, he's got a video going out, which is, um, Talking all about yeah, ground formatting, sheets. ground sheets, Do all you that need cool one? stuff. Are they a waste of money or not? It is all revealed. I'm revealed in Alex's video coming soon. Yeah. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about your cooking setup. It seems very similar to my setup. Yep. Um, free burner stove. Yeah. The old lifetime table. We uh, can't go wrong with one of those. Yep. Thirty bucks, forty bucks at Bunnings. Yep. Yeah, I've had that for like oh, seven years. Yeah. So. Solid. It's a good bit of kit. And the uh, fire pit there, Red yeah, Roads. Red Roads folding fire pit. Um, we used it for a little while last night, but it got chilly, decided we wanted a bigger fire, so we dumped it and went to the ground. Yeah, which we, we're lucky we can in this area, because um, yeah. obviously some areas have to have a uh, fire pit. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, and it's, it's simple to set up nice. And well, what's that, what are they worth? Uh, they are worth about 350 bucks, I think. Okay. Yeah. Falls down, 12 kilos, comes with a canvas bag, comes with a grill that goes over the top. Which, yeah, cook on, beautiful. Beautiful to cook on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and three the, burner um, gas stove, hook it up to a gas bottle. Found this at the op shop a couple of weeks ago for 10 bucks. Wanted to give it a go. So I uh, used it to heat my swag last night. That was interesting. Did it work? It wasn't bad. Eh? I left it going for about 10 minutes and it's sort of right on the foot area. So my feet were so toasty. Nice. But also last night when we had the fire, I had fire in front of us, and then I had the gas heater behind mm. me, warming me from behind. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that fire was putting out some wicked heat, so. Yeah. Definitely no complaints with the heat department last night. Bit of fun, play around with it for a bit longer. And it looks like you just carry standard little 40, what's that, 30 liter? What was that noise? That was a train. Oh, it was a train. Um, it's a 20 liter one, but it actually gets about 25 liters in it. Yep. And uh, that's all I've carried so far is jerry cans. I haven't found a setup that I like for water. Yeah, I'm the same, man. I liked it on my old GU, which was I had the steel bar, so I had the twin jerry holders. Oh, and yeah. yeah. Just a little snap tap on it. So simple, 40 litres of water on the rear bar. But I'm trying to avoid the weight with this patrol, so I don't want the steel bar. And hence, I haven't found a solution for water. I've, I've thought about them all. The little... Um, triangle tank that goes between your drawers and your back seat mm. don't have enough space for it because I've got my drawers all the way forward um, uh, yep. the footwell one well that won't work for me because I do occasionally take adults in the back mm. so if you put 40 litres in the rear footwell they're going to have their knees up around their head yeah, it won't be fun so for now it's just jerry cans I poke them in wherever I can find some space very cool and simplicity again just you can fill it up you take it with you yeah. it doesn't have to be in the car all the time yeah very very easy it does the job it's just it's not as convenient you know you got to pick up a jerry can and tip it out and yeah it's a hard life yeah isn't it? and all this lifting man <laughs> <laughs> become jack by the end of it yeah all right um so actually 
because obviously a lot of people that watch your your channel um, and my channel and a lot of four driving channels they seem to be into photography and that kind of stuff mm. so let's talk a little bit about your your power setup so you've got the inverter in the back um, yep. and you've got a assuming like a pelican case or whatever it is here yeah which it has a dangling cord going into it yeah so this one's an interesting setup I basically you carry so much camera gear you got GoPro batteries double-a batteries this camera that camera different brands some of them need 12 volts to charge some of them need USB 240 volts and so I end up with my dash just strewn with all these 12 volt adapters and USB things and stuff charging all through the back seats I decided to go all 240 volt so in this old safe case there is a power board stuck in down there uh, USB adapter in the power board so I've got USB power around the place all the 240 volt chargers and USB chargers all plug into there so I've got all my batteries on charge stored in here one plug and just straight into my inverter up there 1600 1800 watts of pure sine wave inverter total overkill um, but yeah that keeps all my stuff charged yeah well if you're 800 watts you can put something else in it as well yeah I've uh, I've run a coffee pod machine off it just for just for laughs but um, it's not very efficient on your batteries so nah, 100 what is it, 116 amp hours you got yeah 116 amp hours um, you make about three coffees and your batteries aren't happy hmm yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a up. lot of there's a lot of drain that um, draws about oh what is it 1600 watts which equates to 150 amps mm. for a couple of minutes so it's just dumping it out of your batteries yeah it just kills them real and, quick um, yeah sucks them right down and you got to allow the battery to recover a bit those two little batteries just nah they don't like it no nah, keep it simple eh yeah and you got the um, rear seat sort of organisers yeah so that's a grab me gear item again rear seat back organizer um, winch cables here multimeter stuff in there torch gloves just all the little knickknacks really little bits and bobs that you might need yeah the back seats uh, stay in most of the time if I'm going on a, a week or more trip I take them out because that's a huge weight saving there and a lot more space to carry more water and I've even had fuel in here before yep yeah be stinky um, yeah, I just, that's I can carry two jerry cans on the roof. I've got two jerry can holders, oh, yeah. so 40 litres. If I need the extra 20 litres, I'll slap it in here and dump it in my fuel tank as, yeah, nice. as soon as I can. The camera gear mostly lives in safe cases. And I used to have this, this rack in this area here, which I knocked up out of plywood. So it was just a big box and it had shelves and I could just slot my safe cases in. But um, it was a prototype and the prototype wore out and I haven't got around to designing the next one yet. Yeah, nice. It was really good though. Just so much easier to store and carry the gear. Very cool. And I suppose moving to the the business end. Yeah, this is pretty this is pretty basic really. Yep. Um, massive tablet mount here. I use a full size ten inch tablet for navigation when I when I need to. It's a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, it's just too big to, to fit anywhere. It's too big to put on the dash. You block most of your driving view. Um, didn't want to go screwing it into here because then mm -hmm. it's all the way over the passenger side anyway, hard to see. And down here, it gets in the way of your gear sticks and everything. So I'm going to pull the tablet mount out and change to a like an in-dash screen. Oh, similar to my setup, yeah. Yeah, just a little a cheap Android um, head unit because I've got all Android mapping programs that I've already paid a lot of money for. So if I use Android and just log into my account on that, connect it to the internet, I can download all my mapping apps yeah, for an Android one. And the uh, dash mat, dash mat organizer, or what are yeah, they called? It's just a little, what does Jimmy call this one? The Gearmate 24. Yeah, I've got the same one. Little zip pouch. I keep maps and stuff in there. A couple of cords, a couple of stickers. All the cool stuff. Yeah, keeps it up out of the way. And she's an automatic. Auto. Four speed. I like the auto. I'm a, I'm a convert for the autos now. Yeah, easier on the beach and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, it's just so easy to drive. No complaints. And you're getting old. You're getting old, so you know. You yeah. Automatic. Yeah, you get over all that juggling gear, gear sticks around, business. Nah. Nah, that's a young man's game. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Uh, you do that when I was 18. I'm 21 now, you know. <laughs> it's too hard. Very cool. And as I said, simple. Um, does the job right. Yeah. And talk a little bit about so engine space. Obviously, it's a three liter. Yep. Um, anything you've done to sort of stop it from exploding itself? Yeah, it's got the NADS Nissan anti detonation system. That's <laughs> what they call it. Uh, which is a combination of, um, I can't remember the name of it now, a little um, boost control thing that stops it from peaking past 16 PSI. Oh, yeah. um, prior to that, you'll see it just kick all the way up to 30 occasionally. Nice. Um, you just keep the MAF sensor clean in it. Uh, it has a three inch exhaust, one muffler. I don't like the noise of a, mm. it just sounds like a big fart, a three liter with no mufflers on it. Mm. Nah, don't like the sound, so. Fair enough. One muffler on there. No performance mods, otherwise pretty much untouched. Stocky boy snorkel. Yep, listen, snorkel has a uni filter, air filter in it. They um, save you a bit of money over the long run, and they filter really good. Yeah, you can clean them up. That's yeah, why, um, I use a K&N of mine, but yeah, they're worth it um, after four or five cleans. Yeah, we can pop the bonnet and have a look. Carl. Have a, has a squizzy boy for sure. And the reason it's covered in sand is um, he decided to get really bogged yesterday. Yeah. Hilarious video that he's going to bring out. Yep. Testing the tread boards, traction boards. Yeah. Where's your little lever lever? Here. There you go. Oh, it's on air struts. It went all out. Yeah. There it is. It's a three litre engine. That is the uh, where the action happens. Yep. Cranking what's, battery. What's that VCR thing over there? VSR, that's just a uh, voltage sensing relay for, oh, for, your for second. that second battery, yeah. Yep. So, main battery, second battery, and then up the back, those other two. So, we've got 100 amp hours there, mm -hmm. and then the 116 in the back. Yeah, nice. So, what's that, 216 all together? Yeah. Beautiful. Yep. All and you enough. run sentries all around, or is it back sentry as well? Yeah, they are actually. All yeah. sentry batteries. I'm pretty happy with my sentries. Yeah, I go all right. I don't, I don't like buying cheap rubbish. Um, yeah. I think they're all super cheap items really mm. so you're either buying the in-house brand or you're buying century if you go in there yeah and they're definitely uh definitely worth the extra money the yeah. intercooler in that thing is so small yep tiny little intercooler yeah not very big at all is it little turbo but, but they don't uh, go too bad it's not a speed demon does the job yeah a bit easier on fuel yeah if you've got nothing on the roof you'll get um 11 12 liters per hundred yeah no happy days yeah and uh, let's, uh, I suppose, get to your tyres. There's nothing else really too much going on here. Yeah. Ready tyres, we can uh, talk about uh, how impressed you are with them. Yeah, so <laughs> impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so you're running the Falcon Wild Peaks. Wild Peak MT. And the size is a 285, 265? 265. 265, so it's a little 32. This one's pretty new. It's maybe got 20,000 Ks on it because I staked one of them. Uh, so this one's actually in reasonable good condition. The rest uh, look a little bit sad. I got a lot of big chunks out of it. There's a good one you can see back here, actually. Whew. Yep, they chip and chunk. All right, that's some real bad wear, eh? Yeah. And so, they, I would assume they're pretty noisy. Uh, they're getting a little noisy now. They were okay to start with, but um, this tire has actually done sixty thousand k's, so yeah. the tread wear is really good. Except for that bit. Just the, just yeah. The general, <laughs> the tread of life is really good. The tread wear is shocking. Yeah, you know, the chunky um, down here as well. Eh? Yeah, lots of chunks. The one of the worst things I've had is the balancing. Um, oh, okay. One of these wheels has 350 grams on it to try and stop the wobble. Um, oh. Another one needed 800 grams, and the tire guys just I cannot possibly fit 800 grams of weight on there to balance it. <laughs> and, um, he's, he put them on the on the balancing machine and, and spun them up and like the treads all it's kind of moves around on the carcass oh, left to right, yeah, yeah. yeah so yep they're they're butchered i'm due for a new set but so uh not a recommendation you reckon nah i would give even for the money because they're pretty cheap aren't they yeah for muddies they're two they were 270 a tire these ones okay um good traction and everything but uh, I'll be going for an all-terrain. And I'm not rubbishing the Falcon brand. Um, I've heard that their all-terrain tire, the AT3, I think they call it, is very yeah, good. Yeah, I that's a good tire. I've heard nothing but good about that. So I'd almost consider going for them. Okay. It's just this particular mud tire. It's, yeah, it's just and too beating. As, as you said, like there's no there's no bashing brands here. This, this could be one really strange, faulty tire that is 
you get over a thousand, right? So yeah. you just don't know. It was one of those things. Yeah. But in saying that, you were saying this got sixty thousand gauges, is that? Yeah, so it's about sixty thousand so gauges now. Pretty damn good tread on it. So yeah, got to be happy with the tread life. Yeah, you that's could sure. you could keep going. It's just um, that steering wheel wobble is insane. Yeah, yeah, it would be fun. That's for sure. And two inch lift. Yeah, two inch lift. Um, King Springs, one hundred kilo in the front, two fifty kilo in the back, and Kony eighty eight monotube shock absorbers. And a stocky, stocky steering, steering damper. damper. Just totally buggered. Needs a new one. Beautiful. Man. Have you painted these headlights? Yeah. So they're. Um, this is a series two GU, and that's series three GU headlights that are in that. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, because I thought it looked a bit different. Yeah, they're a bit of a cleaner look, and I popped the headlights open and painted black inside. Very and, nice. Uh, I did do nightshades on the corner lamps, but the nightshades is all worn off. Needs redoing. Almost looks like a professional job, mate. That's not too bad, is it? Yeah. Yeah. That's about three years old, so the sun hasn't done any damage to it. Yeah. It's good. No, I thought yeah, um, they were like a factory item or something like that, or you had to buy them. Nah. Full DIY jobbies. Nighthawks. These are a newer edition. Yeah, they are. I've had them on there, yeah, about a year, a little bit over a year. Um, bloody powerful spotlights. You just have covers for spread and spot so you can pop that oh, yeah. off and have two spot two spotlights if you want to yep extremely bright mm. yeah they say one lux at 1.3 k's damn that's not bad yeah that's pretty solid, solid really yeah it's more power than you really need yeah but, um you know it's nice to be able to throw some numbers out there and sound like a big man <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah <laughs> gotta throw those luxes out there right yep if you want to see a climb down the road and Squeezed a winch in here. Yeah, I was going to say you've you've managed to squeeze it in pretty well, actually. Tight, isn't it? Ridge rider, twelve thousand pound. This is just the bar the car came with, alloy, non-winch compatible bar. Yep. Which I've cut this out of, put a hundred dollar eBay generic winch cradle in, mm -hmm. and sit the winch in there. So yeah, the definitely. bar doesn't actually take any load from that winch. It's all on the cradle. Perfect. You just cut the opening, a bit of pinch weld around it. Yeah, make it, take it. Absolutely. And, uh, well, yeah, you would have had to replace the whole bar, so yeah, makes it worth it really well. And it's, uh, I, ha I have that winch, and it's a damn good winch, considering, uh, you know, how cheap you can sort of pick them up. Yeah. It's actually a pretty strong little winch, so. I used it for the second time yesterday. Yeah, we, we pulled him out of the, the yeah. rubbish. Got myself a little bit too stuck on the beach. <laughs> All in, uh, for the video content. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, awesome man and yeah i suppose that's pretty much the whole car isn't it yeah that's about it um got the roller titan platform tray up the top oh, yeah, we'll have, the... a, have a gander at the uh roof rack this is again same as mine yep this is the slightly older model so yours is the updated looks yep and yeah three roof bars platform sits on top and i have a load of um bolt-on accessories as well so i've got the high lift jack carrier i've got the traction board mounts, twin jerry holders, a light bar mount, all of that to go on there as well. I just don't have much of it on at the moment. Yeah, not when you need it for, don't really need it for this trip. Nah. That's for sure. And um, I can even, I can even vouch for these. They're, they're pretty hardy. Like, they're yeah. pretty strong bars for uh, what you pay for them. Yeah. I think I paid 450 for mine. Yep. Yeah. And I had to get the roof racks obviously, but yeah, it, they're not yeah. expensive at all and they're, they're light. They carry about 150 kilos. Yeah. They're pretty pretty. They don't look too bad. Rugged. Yeah. Quite Thin. a nice modular design. Just slot all these different accessories in as yeah. you want. Not noisy. Big thing. Yeah. They're not yeah. noisy at all, so. Never a whisper heard from that. No, they've been good. I've loaded it right up. I've, I went and did a place in the Pilbara and uh, had two swags up there. Um, 40 litres of fuel, a uh, whole spare wheel, tyre on it and everything, gas bottle, shower tent. A um, bit of firewood at times. I yep. really loaded that up. Got it going. And then smashed one of the roughest tracks ever into um, Carla Milgi National Park. Oh yeah. Absolute yep. middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing fell off the car. Yeah, it did well. Not noise from the rack, didn't come loose. Can't yeah. complain. My gutters haven't torn through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you always worry about that, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, much, how much stress you put under those things, but nah. Nah, she's a good rig, man. And as I said, it's, it's simple and that's your whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, that's Simplicity. right. Simplicity. Like I said, it took me to Carla Milgi with no long-range tanks. I just carried 
60 litres of jerry cans, fuel, diesel in them. Yep. Yeah. Has it got dual tanks or single? It's got dual, that's a standard GU thing. Yeah, so okay. 125 litres is your standard. Shows you how much I know about GUs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me about a Triton, I'll know everything. <laughs> yep. GUs, I'm like, nope. <laughs> I have no idea. I know they've got a 3 litre and a 4.2 and some kind of 6.5 if you get the right one. Yeah, 6.5 if you blow your 3 litre and yeah. swap it for a V8. Yeah, for that dirty diesel in there. Yeah. Alright, awesome. Well, hopefully, um, if you've got a GU, like Alex does, um, gives you a few little ideas about what you can do to yours. Yeah. And um, thanks for doing a bit of a walk around of the car. I'm about no to problem. do my walk around in your channel, so go check that out. We'll link each other and do all that yep. cool stuff in the uh, descriptions and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, but yeah, another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures. And as always, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And go subscribe to Alex's channel if you haven't already. But I reckon we'll leave it there. Cool. Thanks for watching. Thanks yeah. for having me, man. Easy done, man. Enjoy. See ya. See ya.